Donald Trump has only been president-elect for eight days. It's still more than 64 days until he actually gets into office. But the same mainstream corporate media that lied to us throughout the campaign, that faked polls, that colluded uh, with the White House and Hillary to try to rig the debates, has now been caught in their biggest lies yet. And this video presentation, this special report, will absolutely destroy you. Exhibit A, the entire corporate dinosaur media, from the New York Times to the Washington Post, London Guardian, are coming out and saying the campaign is imploding, that the transition team uh, is in total disarray, that everyone is involved in a mass exodus, that they can't hire the 4,000 people needed to take over the executive branch. When in truth, they're going in and purging the executive branch of lobbyists. The number one promise that Donald Trump gave to the American people that he would do as soon as he got into office. So it's not discord when Vice President-elect Mike Pence begins to kick the lobbyist out of the Republican Party. He's telling the henchmen of the special interest that have hijacked this nation, you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> So the collaborator press that works with these multinationals that have hijacked our nation is desperate. They've doubled down on the whole race narrative, but Americans across the political spectrum, regardless of race, color, or creed, or religion, aren't buying it. They love the message of lower taxes and draining the swamp and restoring America's greatness. And Trump means to deliver. So now the new narrative across the board is he's incompetent. He's a joke. He doesn't have a transition team which really means he's kicking all the lobbyists out. So they're trying to then even withdraw support in Washington to make sure that the bureaucracy rebels against him. And that's why it's key for us to support Trump now more than ever, because we've sent him to Washington to do an incredibly dangerous, dirty job. And remember, no matter what Trump does, they're always going to spin it that it's bad. This is the first president in the last 60, 70 years I've seen that actually does what he says he's going to do by even restricting lobbyists or cutting them back. He is waging war on them. He is delivering in triplicate. So let's look at the facts and see who's really incompetent. We have the media that lied and said he would lose, that got caught giving all the questions to CNN and ABC News and the rest of it. That's all in the WikiLeaks, totally corrupt, trying to deceive the American people. And that same media tells us that Trump is incompetent when he just finished his latest D.C. hotel a year ahead of schedule, and massively under budget. And he does that in every other major project he's been involved in. He's known for that. His father was known for that. Look at the energy we saw on the campaign trail. Look at the stamina, breaking all previous records, not just in how many trips he made or how many speeches he gave, but also in the amount of small donations from grassroots people. He is the true populist. Under budget, ahead of schedule. That's what this is. Under budget, ahead of schedule. Let's compare that with Obama. When he got into office, there was $2 trillion missing. And that was in the entire history of the Pentagon going back to the late 1940s. In less than eight years, it ballooned to $6.5 trillion in missing money. Trump under budget, ahead of schedule, Obama tripling the amount of money missing at the Pentagon when he was in office. Under budget, ahead of schedule. That's what this is. And the very same big banks and, and the Clintons behind Obama are the people that got rid of Glass-Steagall. They're the ones that allowed derivatives. They're the ones that basically engineered with the establishment Republicans the massive banker bailout that tagged tens of trillions more of private debt onto the American people, and those debts haven't even been paid back yet. Then let's not forget Obamacare, bipartisanly written by a bunch of central banks and giant multinational insurance companies by the very same establishment Republicans that opposed Donald Trump who worked with Obama to ram it through. If you like your doctor, you can keep it. It's going to cut your premiums to the cost of a telephone or cable bill. All of this was a sick joke, admitted to be a fraud against the American people. And the main architect, Gruber, even bragged that Obama hired him to deceive the American people. So I guess in a way, it's not total incompetency. 
It's premeditated evil. But how are you liking the skyrocketing premiums? How are you liking the IRS fining you with penalties? How are you liking being raped by the so-called Democratic Party? To get a law which said healthy people are going to pay in, it made explicit the healthy people pay in and sick people get money, it would not have passed. Okay, just like the people, transparent, lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. Now, juxtapose all that criminality, all that mismanagement, all that colluding, all that rigging with what the media is criticizing Trump with. Last week when he went to D.C. and met with Obama in Congress, he didn't tell the media that he was going to go back to New York. He broke protocol. He didn't let them boss him around and control what he did. But then it got worse. Last night, he went to his favorite steakhouse and didn't tell the media when he did it. This is just outrageous. This is so horrible what he did. He went to a steakhouse with his family. And of course, he got a standing ovation when he came into the packed restaurant that didn't even know he was coming. Oh, and on top of it, he then shook hands for an hour before he ate and promised folks that he was going to be cutting their taxes, just like he promised me on the phone last week. And I've had the Washington Post, the New York Times, so much the old dinosaur media call me and say, what'd you talk about when you were on the phone with Trump? And I've said, you know what? It wasn't a private conversation, but I'm not going to share it with you because you're not real media. You're just using me as a prop. I told the New York Times this to act like you actually interviewed me. You want to spin and twist. But you know what? I will kind of rub it in and tell them some of the conversation. It was laughing at you and how much fun it was for Trump to ignore you and, 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 and not empower you when you're backstabbing traders that work for foreign banks that are trying to bring this country down. He's doing all this on purpose to show what a joke you are and then to watch you like toddlers throw giant fits. So again, he's continuing to outsmart all of you. And it's not just Alex Jones and Donald Trump that are laughing. Across the internet, folks are just absolutely loving the way he is trolling you stuck-up, conceited, sycophantic, traitorous, joke-level dirtbags. <laughs> who still don't know why you lost the election. And of course, I'm just waiting for when Trump tries to take a vacation around Christmas, which I really think it's 70, he deserves. I mean, he is an Iron Man, but come on, you deserve to spend some time with your family. Wait, they're going to say it's horrible and he's lazy and bad, despite the fact Obama reportedly took almost five months of vacation a year on average. Truly unprecedented. Talk about incompetent. Talk about a lazy ass. Then we've got the EPA with one of the biggest spills in our history. They didn't even try to contain it for several weeks because I guess it's okay when the government dumps a bunch of cyanide into rivers. And while Obama was vacationing and Hillary was napping during the floods in Louisiana and Mississippi, who came and visited? Who donated massive amounts of money? Who went through more than a dozen towns and hand-delivered the aid directly to the people? <gasps> That's right, the incompetent Donald J. Trump. Speaking of incompetence, we have the vaccine makers of this country who in the 1980s got Congress to pass a law shielding them from liability from their dangerous products. Well, Donald Trump has said vaccines should be investigated, that too many of them are being given, and that he is preparing for investigations into why so much autism is spreading across this country. Again, that's the opposite of the government giving immunity to the drug companies to dump this garbage on the streets. And thank God Donald Trump isn't incompetent and actually cares about America's children. Of course, we all know there's a little bit more than incompetency, and this is part of population control. But when you look at the billions and billions of dollars paid out secretly through the vaccine damage fund that the media tries to keep from the public, it lets you know that the press certainly is incompetent for not doing their job and exposing how deep this rabbit hole goes. But I need to be fair again. When Obama takes overseas vacations at taxpayers' expense, it's not incompetency, it's milking the slaves. I've got to admit it, I am enjoying watching the, the last dying gasp of the corporate media. Uh, it is amazing to see them scramble to try to figure out ways to get the public back on their side. Uh, one of their new initiatives is not just to say Donald Trump's incompetent or a racist. They're also saying fake news got him elected. Uh, when it's mainstream media that's been caught lying and getting us into these wars and claiming Saddam Hussein had WMDs when he didn't, 
And it was basically only Donald Trump back at the time that was going on Fox News and CNN saying, don't get into these wars. So again, more incompetency. But I got to correct myself. Some of these wars have been about incompetency. Others, like Hillary and Libya and Syria, have been about her being on the jihadi Saudi Arabian payroll, along with Obama, and financing a Wahhabist jihad takeover of the Middle East and Africa. So Donald Trump gets hotels done ahead of schedule and way under budget. Donald Trump built some of the best golf courses in the world ahead of schedule, under budget. He ran a campaign that overthrew the mainstream media, overthrew the pollsters, discredited the entire system, annihilated uh, the political lobbyists and political hacks that he was supposed to pay over a billion dollars. He did it for less than 10% of that. And as a revolutionary, not just in building and industry and finance and so much more, he is rewriting the playbook for decades and decades to come. The truth is, Donald Trump is an absolute and complete dynamo. He is a renaissance man. He has proven himself to be one of the most exceptional men in not just modern history, but world history. And if Donald Trump can even halfway drain the swamp, deliver tax cuts, secure our border, and make America great again, Donald Trump will go down in history as the greatest president in our entire incredible experience. And that's why he's got to deliver for my children, for your children. But also because if he doesn't, he won't fulfill his destiny. He won't fulfill our destiny. We're all in this together. America has incredible providence. And that's why we've got to stay behind Trump and back him all the way, but at the same time, hold his feet to the fire. Look, I know Trump's for real, but he's got infiltrators. He's got people trying to manipulate him. He's got just incredible mountains to climb, but he's already come so far. His instincts are amazing. That's why we've got to pray for him. We've got to support him, and we've got to continue to fight and get the word out. And in closing, I'll tell you one more thing Trump told me last week. He said, I appreciate the job you're doing, Alex. I appreciate your audience. I love what you've done. Thank you so much for your spirit, and please keep it up because I'm having to focus on getting this new government launched, and it's hard for me to defend myself, so thank you. Keep it up. Well, Mr. President, number 45, we are going to keep it up. Look, I'm not going to sit here and say, see, I told you so, that communist Chinese style net censorship was coming to the web, because it's already here. It's being announced. The way you keep the internet open and free is you get involved more than ever. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. InfoWars Live, available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. You gonna sit down and play games and be a trendy? Or are you gonna be part of history? Don't sit by and let the internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action.